Well, Dr. Simon Adams is from the Global Centre for the Responsibility to Protect, which presses for international action against mass atrocities. Good to talk to you. The UN, of course, is the world's diplomat, but it seems powerless to act here, especially when countries such as China and Russia exercise their veto. Is there anything that could really make a difference? I think there's lots of things that, that could make a difference. And thank you for having me on the show, Mike. I, I do appreciate it. Um, I think what we've seen here is that clearly, you know, the, the Secretary General's statement was a positive one, but it's going to take much more than press releases and statements by anybody, including myself, to change the, the, the situation. More that can happen? Yes, absolutely. An arms embargo, targeted sanctions on the key generals, total divestment from the military-controlled economy, no diplomatic recognition of this regime at the UN or anywhere else. And finally, an ICC referral, referral to the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. Now, those are things that can happen and should happen, but they require political will. And regional neighbours could step in, I guess. Do you think there is practically, realistically, any chance of any of it? Well, I, you know, I hope so. I mean, certainly the region could do a lot more. Uh, some states have been quite muted in their criticism of what's going on. And one worries that there are some people, businesses and governments in the region who are waiting for the blood to dry a little bit on the streets before they try to return to business as normal. And I think, you know, we need to send a very clear message, the, by we I mean the entire international community, that there can be no business as usual with generals who have seized power illegally, who continue to, to gun down unarmed protesters uh, in the street, and that there absolutely has to be consequences for their actions. It's very difficult, isn't it? The military is so powerful in the country and has made it clear in the recent past, has prepared to use almost any level of force. I guess it is possible for them, entirely possible for them to put down the protests. Is it possible for them to run a country with this level of force, this level of fear? No, the country at the moment is ungovernable by the military. I think that is that is clear. And the other side of this equation, of course, which has to be mentioned, is the tremendous bravery, the commitment and the ingenuity of these thousands and thousands and thousands of civilians who, despite this kind of murderous repression, come out every single day. I mean, I wake up here in New York every morning to text messages, to emails, to photographs that have been sent to me by people who are inside the country who are still protesting and still going. And I think, you know, the very least that the international community can do is, is to honour them and their bravery by trying to increase the pressure on the military. Can you see ways that international businesses could be encouraged not to do business with the military, with the country, rather than, as you say, simply waiting for the blood to be washed off the streets? Absolutely. I mean, one is reminded of kind of apartheid South Africa during the 1980s, which was kind of a pariah state. Nobody wanted to be caught doing business with the South Africans at, at some point before the transition from apartheid. You know, just today, Benetton, the Italian company, said that they will no longer be involved in any kind of business interests in, in Myanmar. We saw Woodside, the major Australian uh, energy uh, company, pull out of Myanmar. We need more companies doing that, and we also need more people doing what the EU did recently, which is to say that it will not provide any development assistance to the government when it is run by a military who are going to use those funds simply to line their own pockets and to buy more weapons to kill their own people with. Dr. Simon Adams, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.